So hey there fellow YouTubers, Frank Bush here again. In the last video I put out, I showed a detailed breakdown of how to do a do-it-yourself rapid ridge line. And uh, in this video, I want to show some components that are used in rope craft when you're out in the field that uh, really beyond just being the basic knots of how to do things, how to utilize some of these rope craft tools that you end up making and uh, the subtle differences that vary between them. So if you're interested in that type of content, stay tuned. So I'm just going to walk through a couple of the different things that I have here and then I'll go through a detailed breakdown of each one of them and exactly their purpose and how they work. Yeah. So in the set that I have sitting here, these are rope tensioners. Now if you watch the rapid ridgeline video that I did, it's very much the same construct where I've got a loop that's attached to the end of a six to eight foot length of cordage and I've got an inline toggle that I've just set onto the line and I've got two of those. And these are really um, rope tensioners. They're designed to apply tension to loads. Like I say, I'll walk through all that in detail. Now, uh, when it comes to this, this is a cordage carabiner. And I showed this out in the previous video as well, exactly how these are made and you know how you can do them and that kind of thing. It's really just a simple loop of rope with a knot on the end. And uh, they act very much like a carabiner where I can turn around and just form a little lark's head knot. I pop the knot that's on the loop through and apply tension and it acts just like a carabiner. So like I said, I went through the full detail of exactly how that's done and how I attach the stick and loop and all that kind of stuff in the rapid ridgeline video. So if you're interested in the specifics of those knots, uh, go back and watch my previous video and you'll see that in full detail. Now a while ago, I made these and these are soft shackles and I did a detailed video on doing one of these about a year or so ago. It's been a little while, but in that video, um, I was dependent on using beads to do that. And uh, I'll walk through the differences between what a soft shackle is and what it really does versus a cordage carabiner versus cordage tensioners. And then there's probably another thing or two, depending on how long this video gets, that will end up throwing in as kind of surprise content near the end, if you will. But uh, like I say, I'll kind of shift camera angles now and I'll start going through the specifics of the uses of each one of these different tools, yeah? All right, so I've brought a tarp and a sleeping bag that I'll use as the example to kind of bind together using this rope tensioner. So the thinking really is, like I say, I've got this eye on the line and it's just got a floating toggle that sits on it. And I described that in detail in the Rapid Ridgeline video of how these are made. I've done these lots out in the field, but uh, and then I just put a little stopper knot onto the end of it, yeah? So, but needless to say, the way this works now is I'm going to just slide this toggle back towards the stopper knot on the line and slide the line in underneath the objects that I want to bind together. And it's really just as simple as turning around and pinching the two pieces of cordage now on this toggle. I'm going to pinch both sides of the cordage together and I'm going to take that loop and I'm simply just going to hook the loop over the one side of the toggle and then over the other. And now I'm just going to pull this, make sure everything's kind of set in place, if you will. And now I'm just going to start to apply tension onto this. And really all I'm doing now is just turning around and right up against the end of the loop here, right up against the tip of that, I'm just going to kind of push with my fingers and it allows me to apply tension. And that's locked. Hopefully you can see that. It starts to be able to really hold a significant amount of tension that sits on there now. And you know, normally when you're doing this kind of binding up stuff, you'd have two of them. So I'll just throw in the second one for this example. But uh, the exact same thing, I've got the loop. I'm just gonna turn around, slide it in underneath the loads that I wanna bind together. I'm gonna turn around and pull a bit of the slack. Pop that over the top, over the top. Put it through and cinch the tension. And I can apply a significant uh, amount of tension to this and it'll lock and hold it as soon as I let go you can see that that tension is being bound on there really well and it's easy enough to turn around and square them up to make sure everything's good these aren't going anywhere in now this is really bound together I mean to give you an example I'm reefing on those now and and they're held so that's really the basic concept of using these cordage tensioners you know if you're wanting to bind stuff to your backpack 
or you're wanting to bind multiple pieces of kit together, using a, a little um, tensioner like this can be invaluable when you're out in the field. And as long as you have a bit of cordage and a pocket knife, it's easy enough to make these things in a matter of a few minutes to utilize when you're out in the field. So just kind of shift here and give you a real close up of these. And you can see where the loop kind of goes around and wraps around the cordage and it pinches this rope into a bend right here and that's really what locks it now if you want to kind of undo the tension of this you simply just kind of rock your toggles and you can loosen that lock that sits in there and then that cordage starts to become free and as that frees up now the entire thing can just be popped off and you're free and now your items are no longer bound if you will i'll show that again now where if you kind of rock that on a 90 degree you can pull that knot like i say hopefully the camera's giving this justice you can pull that knot so it's no longer locked at this point and that allows you now to just pop this toggle back through the loop of cordage and you're off sorry <laughs> and you're off but that's really the essence of these tensioners you know of i used a similar concept on the rapid bridge line where i'm wanting to bind to a tree you know you can do similar things with this where you can bind any pole or anything else you wanted any trees or any of that business all using that same technique yeah so i'll move on to the next item now and kind of talk about it so like i say the next item i'll kind of talk about and i've mentioned this in the previous video was these little cordage carabiners now i keep tons of loops in my bags if you've watched previous videos of mine you'll have seen this lot of i use i i must have 30 or 40 of these sitting in my bag at any given point in time this is a small one because it's really designed more for being used on ridge lines and that kind of stuff but uh needless to say it's a fisherman's knot loop and i'll show that in detail now on the last video i was using a dark green cordage and i don't think the knot what it looked like came out but it should look like this. That's a fisherman's knot. So if you don't know how to tie those knots, there's lots of tutorials, or you can go back and watch my previous video on the rapid ridge line, and uh, you can see the details on that. But really, the heart of these is they can become like carabiners. Yeah, you can use them to strap as uh, prussic loops onto ridge lines and those types of things. These are really versatile little pieces of kit within their own right. You know, even though it's just a simple little loop of cordage, you can do a whole lot of stuff with this. And I've shown that in previous videos where I've used it to build structures and all sorts of things just using these loops. I've built beds and all sorts of different contraptions using just loops of cordage. But in order to use them as a carabiner, there's two ways you can go about it. You kind of hold the knot opposite the where you're going to want to put the loop and on this end i'm just going to want to do like a lark's head so i'm going to fold it over on itself i'm going to grab onto those two form a little circle pocket and i'm just going to stuff that knot through and then i'm just going to tighten up that lark's head knot and by doing that it allows me to in essence have a cordage carabiner this acts the equivalent of a, a carabiner pretty well in every way. Of I'll show you the alternative method for tying this onto the end here. And this is really better when you're wanting to actually hook onto the tarp itself. Of I take the end with the knot on it. Make sure I'm getting this on camera, okay? I take the end with the knot on it and just kind of give me a little loop right near that. And I'm just going to take the bite that I made. I'm going to push that through. I'm going to bring that over the top of that knot. I know it's not coming out elegant, but bring that over top of the knot. And then just make sure that it's set on that way. And it does, in essence, like a lark's head as well just on a 90 degree turn from the previous one and that's on there locked and tight now that is the equivalent of a carabiner one of the problems that exists with this though is i don't have any tensioning ability that exists within this piece of cordage you know of uh, it really just acts as a carabiner and and not much more and i'm going to shift over to the soft shackles now that i made previously and show you how you can kind of get the best of both worlds when it comes to having it used as a tensioner and having it used like a cordage carabiner so let me just shift camera angles and i'll go into that in detail yeah okay so i've got two examples of the soft shackles that i've made and one of them is kind of a larger soft shackle 
and the other one's a smaller one. Now I did a detailed video on how this was made using the beads that kind of thing in this video given that i'm already pretty quick into the video now i might turn around and do a full example of how to make one of these soft shackles that don't have any beads on them at all they're purely just made out of knots yeah but i'll kind of give you an example of where soft shackles can be far better than a cordage carabiner even though cordage carabiners are fast you know they're easy to make i can whip them together in a minute or two and have that capacity um, a soft shackle is a little bit more flexible in that regard and i'll show you why so i showed in the previous video when i made these and i don't think i really detailed out the multi-functionality of these but in essence this is a modified Fairmont hitch which is a knot that I kind of use heavily out in the field and you'll see this being used in lots of my previous videos and it has the ability where I can press it and slide it along the line just like you would a Prusik say but once it's kind of in its position with any tension on it it'll lock and hold and I can easily turn around and just slide this where I've got a small little loop on the end and on take the other end and pop it through like I would a soft shackle or uh, sorry a cordage carabiner and have that that it's locked and you know it does exactly the same job as a cordage carabiner does but like I say it's not quite as flexible because and I'll just stop and show you on this example now when I'm using these in a slightly larger context I can turn around and slide these out now i'm just gonna use the knot in a slightly different way in this example i use the knot where i fed you know the tail end if you will in through let me just loosen this off a bit these get on there really tight too so but you can loosen them out so as you can see here i kind of fed the tail through the loop that I created but you can also use it the other way where instead of using the tail to feed through that loop you can use just the loop itself to be able to bind and apply tension and I'll show you that with the larger example because it just works around these better I primarily use the little ones to be the equivalent of a cordage carabiner and with the larger version like I have here I'll just bring back over my tarp and sleeping bag again and show you that I can do a similar setup now where I only have one of these so I'll just kind of set it to the middle of things but now when it comes to being able to tension this off and join these together I simply just slide this modified Fairmont hitch up the line and I can achieve the same kind of tension I was with a rope tensioner as you can see they're really snug on there that's not going anywhere right and it gives me the ability to kind of lock things like a tensioner would but it also gives me the ability to use it more like I would a cordage carabiner where I just simply you know set in that that end and create it like a, a locked loop if you will so using a soft shackle is definitely a little different than it would be using a cordage carabiner in that regard because it has that extra level of functionality now when it comes to getting these off it's a little bit trickier but that knot itself now just kind of slide my hand into the gear i can just pull that back out and take it off so even though it's a multi-purpose knot it's not as elegant as the rope tensioner in that regard of it's a little bit harder to kind of break this and get it off and really all I'm doing is pushing on the inside of the knot right in here and I'm gonna push that out and that's how you kind of loosen things off with this setup whereas like I say the rope tensioner that I showed earlier in the video it's a lot easier to just break the spine of that little toggle and free it but given these soft shackles how they work I don't necessarily have to have separate cordage carabiners and separate rope tensioners to be able to do these different variant tasks that I want. I can use soft shackles to be able to achieve all the objectives, but it's more of a multi-purpose tool. It doesn't necessarily cover everything, but where it becomes really handy is in the regards of if I want to turn around and like I say, I'm just kind of set those out now. Um, if I was to constrain someone 
I could easily, you know, tie their hands behind their back, set the tension, and lock them like you would a shackle. And that's really the difference here. Of, as soon as you apply tension outward, it locks at any point in time. So this loop becomes more of a variable sized loop. I, at any point along this line, as soon as I um, let go and want to use that loop at exactly that size, I can. And it'll hold and it'll lock and it's not going anywhere. So it's really flexible in that regard. If I can make small loops that I turn around and if I only want to have one that's that big, you know, as soon as there's any tension applied from the inside of the loop outward, it's going to lock and hold. So that's really the, the kind of main differences that exist between a soft shackle, a tensioner, and a cordage carabiner. And, you know, depending on what you're doing when you're out in the field, you know, there's subtle variance differences of what you might be doing. But uh, all of these definitely serve purpose. When it comes to being able to gather up wood and those types of things, you know, if I had multiple pieces of wood and I wanted to lash them all together into a bundle when I was out in the field, I could easily turn around and use the soft shackle to achieve those same kind of results where, as you can see, it was easy enough for me to bind all that wood together. I know this is only a small, simple example, but hopefully it gives you the concept now. And when I wanted to break that, I simply grab onto that knot and pull. Hopefully that makes sense, yeah? And then this whole thing just frees off. But wherever I leave this knot, no matter what the tension is on the inside, it's not gonna give. And that's really where the flexibility of the soft shackles exist. I can still use this soft shackle, even the large one, I can still use it where I've just got a larger knot that sits onto the end of it. Hopefully the camera's seeing that all right. <coughs> and I can still just feed that through just the same, apply tension, and use it as a cordage carabiner that way, and have it locked, and it's not going anywhere. You know, it's good and solid. And I put a little extra tag on there so I can pull that and give me a bit of flexibility to get in at these knots because I know that uh, when it comes to this modified Fairmont hitch, it binds on a little tighter than say um, a Prusik loop would on the line, even when there's no tension being applied. It's still, you know, I'm able to slide things along, but it's a bit firmer, right? It definitely wants to hold on to that line a little, a little stronger than a Prusik would. And that's one of the reasons why I like using them. <coughs> even a taut line hitch doesn't compare to the binding capabilities that this modified Fairmont hitch does. So like I say, um, when it comes to uh, there's a few subtleties that exist to it. I've got a few additional knots that exist in here And that's really just to make it that when I pull this tight The the knot doesn't roll into itself and permanently lock in I, I Put in a little stopper knot if you will here and that stopper knot just stops it from uh, pulling this cordage right inside the Lark's head to uh, the modified Fairmont hitch sorry and never being able to get it out you know, of that little stopper knot really just stops that from happening. It's the, the, this right here is the minimal diameter, if you will, that that loop is permitted to go down to. So like I say, I'll kind of shift gears and carry on in the video, yeah? I've got just a piece of cordage here. I'm going to show you exactly how I make these um, soft shackles without using any beads or anything else. So I'm going to take this cordage and bring the two ends together just figure out where my halfway point is now that's roughly where I'm going to end up just having my stopper knot now this by no means is being set in stone here I'm just applying a loose knot to begin with just so I have it sitting into the gear if you will now I've got a little nub here I'm just gonna wrap around to use as a point to kind of work with if you will and now I've got these two lines that are kind of coming off I'm gonna take the one line and the underhand wrap it and form a little loop here, make it a bit bigger. And when it comes to this now, I'm gonna take the other end, put it over top, and I'm gonna loop, take the loop and kind of wrap it around that line. I'm just gonna bite it with my teeth, but I'm gonna wrap it around my line three times. And then I'm gonna feed a bite of the working end of the tag end, depending on how you want to look at that. I'm going to wrap that around and stuff it in through the little opening that I make. So I'll, I'll walk through that, but I, I have to bite this in my teeth to give me the tension I want. So I won't be able to talk through it, but hopefully you'll be able to see it well on the camera. Yeah.
So now that I've got that wrapped around the line three times, I'm going to take a bite in the line, just feed it through that loop, and start to apply tension to this whole setup. By pulling out on that loop and kind of setting that knot. <coughs> now that gives me my modified Fairmont hitch. This makes it that I can slide this on the line and wherever I set it to, once this is all dressed up in the knot, it's just going to lock and stay there. It won't go anywhere. Now this is normally what I do out in the field if I wanted to make it adjustable and have it that it kind of set and then I can set it to whatever point I want. And if I wanted to quick release that, I could easily just pull on here and that whole knot comes undone and the whole thing comes free. Now, given that I don't want to turn around and have it that this modified Fairmont hitch ever comes off the line, I'm just going to turn around and set it back on again. Now instead of doing a bite here in the line, I'm just going to, and feeding the bite through, I'm going to feed the end through entirely and just let that sit into the line and allow that to have the tension and kind of set it now. So now this modified Fairmont hitch is good and on the line now it's not going anywhere and in order to stop this from ever coming loose in the future all I do is right up near where this um, tag end is coming off I just turn around and do a little overhand knot here and bring that up right up close as close as I can get it to that modified Fairmont hitch and that way I know this knot's never gonna come loose it's never gonna um, untangle if you will but at the same point in time it still has that functionality where I can run it on the line and adjust the tension at will so that's kind of the first main component of this and you can see there's even a bit of slack there I'll just go and put another overhand knot in there tighten it up cinch that off and make sure that it's right up tight to here this doesn't really have to be the cleanest knot it just has to functionally be able to work really really well so i can still slide it and wherever i slide it to it locks and holds the tension locks and holds the tension that was the wood <laughs> but now i'm just going to turn around and take my pocket knife here and cut off that extra little bit of oh cut off that extra little bit of cordage that was on there and this really is just a garbage piece of cordage I had kick, kicking around it's low grade stuff so I'm not overly concerned but uh, I'm just gonna melt the end now make sure it doesn't fray or any of that business right now this knot is on there permanently now it's not going anywhere so and because I just did the, in the example, I applied a whole bunch of tension onto that little stopper knot that was midway here. I'm gonna have to loosen that a bit. So that was just the little one I put at the halfway point on the line. I wanna be able to slide that down a bit. So let me just break that, break that knot's back. It's always when I'm doing recordings, right? <laughs> Every time. So either way, that little overhand knot that we put in there at the very beginning, I'm just loosen that now. I'm going to slide that knot right up. So it's right up near where the Fairmont hitch is going to end up being at the end. And wherever you set that stopper knot, like I say, that'll just be how what the what the minimum size loop is that you'll be able to create. 
So needless to say, I'm on the right side now. And I'm just gonna set that in close to here. And when it comes to being able to move this Fairmont hitch now, as I slide it along the line, you'll see that that little stopper knot just gets up to the point where it stops it from pulling through and just keeps it as a, a tag so the knot doesn't roll into itself. And that's really the primary objective of the having that whole thing. And now when it comes to the final component of things, when it comes to this end, I really just want to put a knot with a couple turns into it. First off, I'll turn around and put a little holder knot so I can pull on that later. And now just up a little bit, I'm going to turn around and put a slightly larger knot where I just roll it on itself a couple times. Just really to give me a, a bit bigger of a knot at the end of the day that that Fairmont hitch is going to be able to kind of hook onto, yeah? And I'll show that now where when I turn around and want to use it like a cordage carabiner, it's easy enough to slide it on the line, lock it up to the point where I'm locked up against that knot now and it's holding it yet the knot didn't roll into itself and now I'm at the maximum size that the loop could be on this side right and if I turn around and pop it open and loosen it back up again it does become a bit of a beast especially when you go right super tight like that I really shouldn't do that when I'm in the example. <laughs> but you can see, I'm back to the point where I now have this soft shackle that didn't require any beads in it to be made. And like I said, this can become like an effective here. I'll just grab a stick here. This can become as effective as a, as a handcuff, really, where I'll hook it over this end of the stump, put in this piece of wood to give you the example as though that was two wrists or two ankles or something. I'm locked on there. And I can lock that super tight. That's not going anywhere. I literally have to break the wood before that person or, you know, whatever you were wrapped around would be able to free themselves. But coming back off, it's easy enough to just slide it back along that line. As long as the tension's being applied from the inside pulling out in that regard on the one part, it'll free up. If it's generally being pulled on both sides of here, it'll lock and hold. And I know this cordage wasn't the best, and uh, if you want to see a cleaner example of me doing this, I did do a previous version of the modified Fairmont hitch being used as a soft shackle. So, but either way, hopefully this gives you an example of how you can make uh, true proper soft shackles when you're out in uh, the backcountry and you're wanting to be able to make cordage that can cinch and be used to do tasks like this, yeah? So I'm not sure how cleanly this turned out on the camera given that I've got the green cordage sitting on the wood that I did the knotting on and that kind of stuff, right? The rope work, if you will. And, um, but if you are interested in kind of a, a clean, detailed version of exactly how the knots are done for this, I did do a soft shackle video on my channel about a year or so ago. And uh, I used an orange cordage in that regard, so it definitely stands out and it's easier to see all the steps of how I've done these. But uh, I'll just kind of show you now that I've put this all together of, like I say, these can work very similar to the rope tensioners, yeah? Where I can lock that down. It's not going anywhere. There's lots of tension that sits on that. This gear is being held together really firmly. And when it comes to wanting to be able to pop this back off again, right at this knot, right where the knot meets the line, if you will, I simply just pull. And I can free that all back up again and just pop my gear off, yeah? All right, fellow YouTubers. Well, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up pretty quick here. 
of I know my videos get a little long I was gonna show some additional content but I can easily push that off to a future video but either way hopefully you enjoyed you know the concepts that I went through today you know when it comes to the uh, rope tensioners they're really handy when it comes to strapping things you know bags and gear to each other or strapping things to your bag and that kind of stuff these are really versatile you can use them to kind of bunch together firewood and all sorts of things right but they are a little bit more involved it takes a bit of time to turn around and carve out the toggles and you know make that kind of stuff happen when it comes to these cordage carabiners they're really handy if you want to just scrap the idea of uh, you know needing to rely on carabiners at all and just use a, bit, a little bit of cordage to be able to do the job you know they're they're easy to put together they're simple they only take a minute or two to really you know whip one together and have it where you can use it when you're out in the field so they're super handy in that regard you know when it comes to the soft shackles they're good in the regard of they can kind of do the job of both of these different you know other entities but they are a little bit more involved the knots a little more complex you know to tie the modified pheromone hitch and to make sure everything's set out properly in those so that they work well you now it, it does take a bit more time and it's a bit more involved but uh to me all of these different bits of gear they have their purpose right when you're out in the field being able to utilize different types of things like this can definitely be advantageous you know to help ease your kind of uh wandering through the wilderness if you will but if you enjoy this type of content like share and subscribe and thanks for watching yeah cheers